Hey, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we are going to start the game that I set up in the last video of Combat Commander using the CC Bot by Rising Sun Studios, James Watton out of the UK, hence his handle, James Watton UK. Uh, we had everything set up. Uh, a couple changes I'm going to make here. Uh, one, I put this marker on here just to remind me, uh, tell me keep track of when uh, 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 two actions have been played uh, for the bot. So when I hit that, I mean, the turn's over. Um, also, when I set up, I put the um, half the forces on this side, which is fine. I'm going to leave them there, but I'm going to shift around a little bit. I have not played much with hills, and so I had to refresh myself on the hill rules. These, these units here can see over these hedges and shoot at them <laughs> like immediately so i'm going to just adjust all i'm going to actually do is adjust this troop here which gives them more protection because they would have the germans would have set up second anyway so they would have seen my forces so um that gives them the protection behind these buildings the buildings will give them cover um but uh the, these hedges will not but they can take their first action to move into there, and then they've got some cover, um, which is what they'll probably do, depending if they get a move action. So we'll see if they have a move card. Uh, we do have the, um, the uh, tank here that has the 50 cal machine gun and the pack howitzer. The pack howitzer cannot do opportunity fire because it's a white banded weapon. The 50 cal can do... Um, uh, do the machine gun fire, but so that does give him a chance there, but he gets to move first so if he can get into the building and into this building, he's at least got some cover. So we will see how that plays out. Anyway, in this scenario, the Axis player takes the first turn. So the Axis player is the uh, AI, and I have his hand of six cards here, and my hand of four cards here. I'll go ahead and reveal mine so you know what I'm working with. So I've got a fire, a fire, a move, and a fire. So I'm in pretty good shape as far as opportunity fire goes. And since I'm on, uh, I'm the defender, I'm going to sit here uh, quite a bit and just try to pick these guys off. So um, the main focus, if you remember, is the open objectives. Uh, and technically this one only counts for the axis. I need to move that back over there. And this one only counts for the allies. The exit points are doubled. So should I, should he exit or should I exit or force him off the board? I get double points, which I'm not going to do. Uh, and right now we are in the lead by 10 points. Um, and they, if they, if they control all of the objectives, all five of them at a, at sudden death, they win no matter what, no matter what the victory points are, no matter what. So, all right, so we're going to flip over the first order card, and it is a two. Don't pay any attention to the actual what the card is. And the number we're looking for to see if he takes an order is a two or higher, so he does. So we will slide that. We'll advance that to indicate that he's taken an order. And then the black die is a one, so we advance the one track. He does an artillery request, so he does not have artillery on the board, neither side does. So because of that, we move the action track down one, which makes it easier for him to have an action at a two plus. He'll have two more chances at a two plus. So essentially that first, that first order was nothing, and we go to the next one. So we are looking again for a two, and we flip, and it is a one, so he does not he does not meet that check, so his turn is now over, and he is going to move that back. So he's got that frustration of where he did not get a move card. So he's going to move that back and uh, discard these, which actually you should be discarding as you go, in case you do have a time trigger. And then I'm going to draw two more, and then what I like to do is I definitely like to take because it's just some purist. I take the two cards and I put them under 
just because I want you know the cards to go in the right order that they would have gone in. So now we are back to me. So um, the way we're both set up is all our units can be activated by one leader here, and I can activate this with one leader, and the same with the German side, since we only have two orders. So I think I will do a, uh, certainly not gonna do a move, so I'll do a fire order. And what options do we have here? We have these smoke grenades, I'm not gonna need that. Smoke grenades, I'm gonna need that ambush. Might hang on to that for, use that one last. So I'm gonna activate this fire order, or this fire order, doesn't matter, they're the same thing. So I activate this fire order, and I'm going to give the command to only directly to uh, this squad who has the five range, which plus one is six, and they'll get a, uh, I'll give them a little marker there to make sure that I know that they, that they fired. And they are going to fire straight down the line at this hex. So that's the target hex. So their firepower is going to be uh, six plus one is seven plus one for downhill is eight. There are no hindrances because they're firing over these into this hex. So they are straight at a seven, eight plus a die roll. So we'll do our first die roll of the game. And we got a seven. So we're at eight plus seven is a 15. And we'll set our uh, marker here for a 15. I just usually use the one. I don't keep track of who's which side I'm on. So it's a firepower of 15 going into this hex. And they have a, they have no um, no cover at all at this moment. There, I was hoping they were going to get to move in. Um, so we are at, he's in an 8 plus 2 for Sergeant Gans is a 10. And he flips over a, oh, we got an event. So it's a 10 plus a 7 is a 17. So he survives the attack without issue. But our event is... Interrogation, look at your opponent's hand and you may select one card and place it in the discard pile. So what I will do here is I've got three cards and I will just roll a real die. And one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a one, so that fire card, it was in my discard pile. So they interrogated me, got rid of my uh, darn card. He has survived, he's passed his check. He has 17 and survived. Now, Sergeant Gans, what's he going to do? He has a morale of 8. And he has drawn a 9. So he's got 17 as well, so he survived. So that, that attack was a waste of time. All right, so he has already activated. The Satchel Charge has not activated, but it will not be activating at this round anyway. And next we've got, do I want to activate them? So the 50 cal can fire uh, that whole range. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And he's on a road hex, which means it would be a minus 1 to his cover. Yeah, that's an increase the firepower. It's minus 1 to his cover. So I think we'll go ahead and take that shot because we can take out, we'll go ahead and take that shot because we can take out the light machine gun. Um, all right, so that's a regular machine gun. It's not a banded one. So it is a firepower of nine plus two is an 11. Well, let's, first of all, let's do what we're supposed to do here. We activate the fire. And we are giving it directly not that it matters at this point, but we're going to give it directly to the um, directly to the weapon. Put that right there. So the weapon team is going to fire, and it is a uh, well, you know what? Let's think this through. We are going to give the fire order to him, so he's activated. And 
the howitzer and the machine gun are going to activate with that fire order because the howitzer can't do opportunity fire which is what my brain was thinking early at the beginning of the game uh, but he can do uh, ordnance fire so we are going to to do that and see if we can dis disrupt them so let's see what we get first with the 50 cal so the 50 cal fires with a firepower of nine and a plus two for Bueller is an 11 and he is not on a hill so it's straight up 11 plus 8 is a 19 attack that's a good attack so we'll shift that to 19 and he is sitting here sitting duck he is an 8 and he gets a minus 1 for his morale so he's at a 7 as it stands right now so a 7 plus a 10 is a 17 so he did not make the attack so he is broken flip that over excellent come back this machine gun which you can't fire until he gets unbroken but that was quick and now we're going to do ordnance fire with the howitzer so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He needs a ten on his targeting roll. So we're going to multiply these two dice together. Let's see what we get. So we got a two times two is a four. So he missed. So that pack howitzer has been dealt with, and I have no one else left to fire. All right. So that was my second order and I now will draw my hand up uh, to three cards, or to four cards total. One, got a route, got a route, and a recover. And I'm going to remove these markers off the board. They're cluttering things. Okay, all right, so now over to the AI. All right, again, we need a two to activate an order. And we got a six, so we did get an order. So we slide that across. And then we activate track two. Go ahead and discard that at this moment. Track two is up, and we're playing a move order. And it is not a special move order. It's just a regular, regular old move order. So what we've got here is... Um, these guys are safe for now, so we're going to let this move order go to this crew, and we want to get them into this building and into this building. So we are going to activate all of these with Sergeant Gans in his two radius. We'll activate everyone here. This guy only has a one movement, which is not good, because to move into a building is a... Two. If Gans had been in there with him, he would have had the two. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna activate all these for movement. So he's gonna move first. And he's got enough to get into the two buildings without. So he's gonna move into this building for two, and then this building for two. And as I only have no fire cards, I shan't be doing opportunity fire. So that is that crew. So what I'd like to do is be able to move this Sergeant Gans into here and then allow him to move. But then Sergeant Gans is left out in the cold, as it were. Um, it will help him to recover if we do get a recover option uh, having Gans in there, but, but he's, he's a little too important right now. So we'll go ahead and have him move in. He's five. So he is going to move here into the building and we've secured those and then what to do with Gans um, I definitely want to get him out of harm's way so I guess we're just going to go ahead and move him into this building as well and hope that this uh, this guy can get away so that is that move order 
for these units here, and I'm going to remember that I've activated that group, so I'm not going to worry about it. You know, I'm going to go ahead and have this guy move It would be better to move him here. These guys can get him. Or there, where that one could get him. That's got a firepower of 10 and 9. And this one has a lower firepower, so he's probably safer here. So he's going to move here to get in cover of these guys. And hopefully stay out of harm's way with those. Because the AI, of course, doesn't know I don't have any fire cards. So, all right, so on to their second order. And we flip this, so we need a two again. And we got a six. So this has moved this up, and that he has fired a second order. And we are going to use track number three. Oh, good timing. Track number three is a recover option. So we are going to go through, this gets discarded, and we will go through the recovery procedure. Uh, and there is nothing, checking the uh, action list just to make sure there's nothing special about a recovery, and there is not. All right, so we're gonna do the recover procedure on this SS group, and he is currently off the road, which is helpful for his uh, morale, and his cover affects morale, so he's at a straight 10. So he's going to do the roll for recovery, and he gets a four, which means he has recovered. If it's less than, he recovers. If it's equal, he's suppressed. If it's greater than, nothing happens. So he has recovered, and he is in good shape. So uh, AI has done two turns. So we're going to reset this back, and we'll draw. We have four cards, so we will draw two more. And put them at the bottom. Alright, so that was back to me now, and so much for having me route, which I was going to use to get him, and recover, which I was going to use uh, for me, but I don't need it. So I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to take this opportunity right now to do a discard. Um, and my discard limit is five, so I'll go ahead and discard these three cards. And throw them out, and I will redraw one. There's a fire order. Two, another recover in case I get hit, and three, another move order, which I don't need, but it does give me light wounds and concealment. He attacks me. All right, so that is my hand. Now, let's see. Did he do anything if I did a discard? If I discard due to passing, then he will draw. Um, then he will draw from his action deck to see if he gets to take an action. Um, he is not the scenario defender, so he will not, he doesn't have a chance at the hidden unit. If he gets a five or six, he will take a demolitions action. So this is where we use the Russian fake deck. And we only look at the white die versus, first of all, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, sorry. So now we're going to, we have an option, an opportunity to do a demolitions action. We cannot do a hidden unit action. But the first thing we have to check is on our track. We're gonna flip this first card and look at the white die. And the white die is a three. So it is greater than a two. So he is gonna to get to take an action. Hey, this is future Kevin. Uh, as I was reviewing this, I noticed I had an error on the action check. Um, the first thing you do is when you draw a card from the action deck, you check against the action track, the white die, to see if you qualify to test for an action. Then you test the black die on that same card against the um, options uh, on, the, uh, on the action chart to see if you get you know, which option you're choosing against. Um, sometimes there's only one for a particular trigger, and sometimes there's two, like we saw here. Um, if that 
check their fails. At that point, you don't increase the marker on the action track. You leave it where it was. Um, uh, if it failed the white die check, you would let it drop one more space on the track if there was room, so it makes it easier to get an action next time. Um, and then the same thing if on the next phase, if we had gotten one, then you check your chance on the right column of the action chart, uh, and you check your chance there uh, against another card. And if that, only if that succeeds and they get to play the action, at that point, do you reset the action track? You do not do it as I did here um, just because they passed that first test. So that was a mistake on my part, and I'll reset it uh, for the next part of the game. For a chance to take an action. So that resets to the top of the action track. That'll work its way down as we go. And then the number is a two. So for on this uh, chart here, a two gives us the opportunity to use a hidden unit if we're the defender, which we're not. So therefore he does not actually get to do an action. And then that goes in the discard pile. So he's getting denied quite a bit here. Now this, he doesn't lose a card yet because he did not actually get to take an action. He had a chance at an action. If he had actually taken an action, we would have discarded one of these cards to simulate the uh, demolitions card that he would have played, but he didn't get to. So now my turn is over. I did the discard action and it's the AI's turn again. So he's back at a two. All his checks are gonna be twos. So we get a two on the white die, which means most of the time he's gonna to get to take an action, which is pretty deadly, actually. So here we go, the first one is a four. Okay, and then, so that's enough. So we'll increase that. And two track goes up, and that gives him a recover action that we'll discard. There is no need for him to take a recover action. So therefore he will just drop this down one. And that just basically improves his chances for getting an action. Next attempt, he also needs a two. This time he gets a one. So his turn is over. That goes back to the start. And he will draw two more cards. So now it's back to me. All right, I have fire, recover, move, and move. Um, I definitely don't want to move. First of all, these guys can't move because if they move, then the, then all this stuff goes away. Um, and I don't want these guys to move because we want to defend this hill. Uh, I should have flipped these, actually. So they have control. So the Germans have now taken control of one, two, and three. And they just need four and five, and they will be, uh, you know, have the whole board at the sudden death time. So, um, but I will say other uh, units have now moved into range. So we are going to go ahead and do our fire order. And we're going to play that. We're going to activate um, all of these units because we know that one can make it. And these can now make one, two, three. And he's got four, one, two, three. So uh, I think we'll activate these guys into a fire group into this hex. So we'll know we're activating all of them for fire. So Kevin does math here. So we've got a six plus a one is a seven. Eight, nine, for them joining in. Plus one for downhill is a 10. Plus our attack roll. 10 plus 10 is a 20. Excellent. All right, so it's a good, good, strong attack. So now let's see how he does referring into this hex. So he is at a 8 plus a cover of 3 for the building. He is at an 11. So his roll oh, is a 7, but we have an event. So he was at an 8 plus 3 is an 11, plus 7 is an 18. So he will be hit after the event. Let's see what event we got first. Interdiction. Suppress one unit in a hex with less than one cover. 
All right, so what do we got here? Suppress one unit in a hex with less than one cover. All right, so they're ineligible. We can suppress Sergeant White. What's his flip side? Command zero. Yeah, they'll suppress Sergeant White. I think that's probably the best move there. So now he has been hit and he is flipped over. I can now move, move over, I can recover. So I can issue a recover immediately. So we'll do that. I will issue the recover order to myself. And then he is here. He has a nine is his current um, morale is a nine. So we'll check our die roll here. And we got a nine, which means he's suppressed because it's equal. So we will come over here and we will grab a suppression killer. So that's even worse now. Little sucko. Okay, well that was my second turn. So I'm gonna draw my hand. We get a, uh, the glider is what we get. We get a move. And we get a recover. Okay, so back to the AI. Again, needs a two to trigger an order. He got a four. So it, did, it was successful. And he activates track one, which is artillery request, which he cannot do. So that comes down. And we go to the next order. It's a two. And he got a six. And these events you ignore here, because this is the playing of card, but you do activate them as you've seen on the draws. So uh, six is enough gonna activate and he activates track one which is artillery denied he can't do anything with artillery denied because we don't have artillery so again this goes down this gets discarded he draws out two cards back to us so do I want to recover or want to discard I think I'll go ahead and just do a recover. Yep. So we're gonna recover on him here. He is a nine right now, and he's a minus one. So he's an eight morale. So he needs less than an eight to recover. And he got a seven, it is an event. He will recover after the event. And the event that comes up is prisoners of war, eliminate one broken American unit adjacent to an enemy unit. Unfortunately, we don't have anybody adjacent yet. So in that case, nothing happens. Uh, the recovery, the suppression would have come off immediately anyway. Oh, actually, he would have made it because anyway, because the suppression should have come off first and then the nine, but we got it with the seven, so he has recovered. And that's good news. So he is there. And we need to hold this position so we are not leaving. This is position five right here. Okay, so I am not going to take any other orders, or any other, issue any other orders this round, so I'll drop my hand. And we got an artillery request, which sucks because we have no artillery. I am the defender, though, so I can take an action to place foxholes in a non-building hex in which your opponent just fired. Alright, I did not reset the AI counter last time, so I'll do that. And we need a two. Now normally, just so you know, normally the, it gets higher, so in a scenario where he would have more orders, uh, it would get harder to have successive orders. So in this case, it's just always a two, and in this case, he does get the two, and we're going to activate track five. Track five is here. He was on top of that one, and that was a fire order. So he does have, he does have a fire order. So who can fire? Nobody. Nobody can fire at this time because they cannot see through this obstacle. No wait. 
So I was, I was just making sure. Uh, and again, the hill thing kind of confuses me. And I was I was reading about hindrances, but obstacles are also specifically mentioned. So um, I do not see where they cannot fire over this at units that are sitting up on a higher elevation. So um, now, who is going to fire? He's not going to fire because he's only got a uh, range of one right now. Um, so the light machine gun. My machine gun has a, has a range of eight. So we could go one, two, three, four, five. So we did a, a um, fire group. Um, e, let's see. This would have a firepower of five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We can get an eleven attack. It's always a, a age old question of do you want to to uh, uh, group everybody or make make uh, multiple shots. So what could happen here is this could be a six, seven attack, and this would be a six, seven, eight. 9 attack. So you could have a 9 and a 7, or you could have 1, 11. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I think we'll do the 11 attack. So these, are, these guys are all going to activate right here. And we're going to do an 11 attack. And I think they're going to attack. They'll attack this hex because they're going to take the leader out if they can, but they have no cover right now. They do get a minus one uh, on their firepower. So that's definitely a reason to do the combined attack. So we've got 11 minus one is a 10, and we're attacking this hex. So we got a 10 plus a six is a 16. Okay, so it's a 16 firepower going into this hex. He's a seven. His current morale is an 8. An 8 plus a 11 is a 19, which is greater than 16, so he's safe. And then Sergeant White has an 8 by himself. And he gets a 7, which is a 15, so he is going to be hit. But first we have an event. And that event is a breeze. Remove all smoke, smoke markers and blazes spread in direction three. We have no smoke markers or blaze. So uh, he got a 15, which means he got hit. His defense rolls under. So he's been hit. So that, that worked out well for the Germans. They took out a, um, a um, leader. Again. All right, so I forgot to move this over. So that has been moved over, and we're now at our second order. Yeah, we have five cards left. All right. Um, yeah, and that was one fire group. So they have all they have all activated, uh, except this guy. All right, and we now have a four. So we are going to have an order. And three is track three, and it's a route. All right, so he's going to play route on me, and this guy right here is a nine. So he's going to do the route roll. Now, yeah, obviously, the enemy routes the the opposing player. All right, so we got a four, and we do have a sniper event first. So let's see what happens here with the sniper. We got a hex, B7, we got a four. So B7 is right here, and there is nobody in the area to do anything about that. So we have four, and he stays put. He's in good shape. So the route failed. Discard, reset, draw, two new cards. All right, time to continue with my turn. So I think since I've now got uh, the four 
like three move cards and an artillery request. Um, I think I'm going to get rid of them all, except I'm going to leave that one crossfire in case I do I do an opportunity fire. So I'm going to discard three and draw three new cards. One, no good, got a route. Two, got another route. Uh -oh. Overkill here. Three, you got a fire. Excellent. So I got a fire. So that was my turn. But you recall, we now got to check opponent discards due to passing. So the first thing we do is check the white die against the track. And we got a four plus on this. So the white die is a two. So he does not take an action. All right, so it is now back to the AI. Again, we need a two. I'm gonna stop showing the chart as much. Two, he got a two. So I'm gonna update that, but then we're gonna activate track three. Track three is a recover order. So the only unit here that needs to recover, he will activate himself for recovery, and he has a 10 plus a three for his current morale. So he's definitely going to do it with a seven, and he has recovered. So he's in good shape there. And the next order is a four, so he did make it. And track three again is at the end. So it is gonna wrap around, and that is a recovery order, which uh, he did not he cannot do because he doesn't need to do it so it doesn't make any sense so he gets the benefit of bringing this down one notch and that was his turn he draws up two all right back to me well so much for having him so much for being able to route him <sighs> so now i'm stuck with move let's see i got a crossfire cap i got a spray fire fire attack of all firing pieces at box range Target two adjacent hexes. I'm, ooh, that's that's nice. And then a fire attack with any number of units that are currently activated to move. Uh, and if I activate them to move, they have to move. At least one unit has to move a hex. So I'm not sure I want to do that yet. But the spray fire. Play a fire attack if all firing pieces have boxed range. So what do we got here? No box range, no box ranged. The elite, nobody has box range anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, well, wait a minute, no, 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 no. I can activate that machine gun to fire, and it does have box range. And it's, I'll we'll have to check line of sight. This is the only hex he could possibly hit. But does he have line of sight into that hex? I'm going to... Yeah, he does. He definitely does. We're going through the center. He is just... You can see the line there. He is just missing those trees. Just. But he does have line of sight. So he is going to take the shot. And he has a... Uh, range of 16, so he's easily got that, and a firepower of 9. Um, 9 plus 2 is for the uh, leader is an 11. Oh, you know what? I believe Chad clarified on this one. You have to, you have to be able to target two adjacent hexes. And I cannot target two adjacent hexes because I cannot see into this one and you can't target an empty hex. So I won't be able to use that action, but I can still go the fire order and you can just do a regular attack. So that's what we'll do. We'll throw that in there and he's not moving. So go back to my calculations here. He does have line of sight. He has a nine plus a two is an 11 going into that hex. And we got an 11 plus six, it's a 17 on the firepower. And of course, since he's in a building, he's going to get a plus three. He's an eight plus three is an 11. Plus 10 is 21. So he's, that was pretty useless. Pretty stupid play, Kevin. Yeah, so I think that's all I'm going to do. 
Whoops! Whoopsie! Uh, and and so goes Combat Commander. <laughs> All right, so I'm drawing. I got to recover, which is good because I need that for that guy right there. Back to the AI and the two-two game. He got a four, so he made it. And he's activating track four, which is under here. And he has an advance order. Let's get the five back where it goes. And the four right there. So he has an advance uh, order. And the advance order allows a unit to move one hex regardless of, uh, well, all the units can be activated, but allows them to move one hex um, Regardless of turning cost, they can just move right in, and that's the only way you can do a um, uh, melee is is via an advance. Um, you know what? These guys are safe. Let's get them moving right now. I think, and they can all advance, which is good for the machine gun, and they can get moving where they need to go. So. Um, yeah, I need to check line of sight on those hexes. I've been kind of ignoring those guys. Oh, they don't have a range. They've only got a range of four. I was trying to figure out if they had. But do they have? They do have line of sight there. They do have line of sight there. This group. And have them move, and they can only advance one hex, so he's going to activate all of these. And we'll just have them move up. They're on the road, but they're in pretty safe company right now because they can't get shot at through these trees. They're going to go up after that gun and he's going to advance one hex as well. Alright, so they've activated and that was that order. Now this order, they did two. They got a three. They made it. And they activate track six. Track six is a recover order. And as it stands right now, they don't have anybody that needs to recover. So that improves by one. That is their second order. We reset and draw two cards for the AI. All right, so I can, I can once again just try to recover, which I think I'll do. And I will play that on myself. And his recovery is a nine. And so my recovery roll is a four. So he has recovered just fine. And he's back to normal, and there's really nothing else I can do here. Or I want to do, because I don't want to move. Chicken. So I'll draw a new card. So I got another fire order, which is good news. All right, a guy's up. Needs a two. He gets a four. It's that. Track one activates. Track one is artillery request. He cannot do that. His hands getting clogged like mine does. And that card is over. All right, next one. Again, needs a two. Got a two. Activates track six. And now he's got a fire order. So again, I think we're gonna do the group fire. Although in this case, Sergeant Gaines will activate everybody. And everybody has line of sight into this hex. In this case, we will have a, uh, let's see, a 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We'll fire 12 into this hex. All right, so we got a 12 plus a 6 is an 18 firepower. We'll get that. But then we have a sniper to deal with first. And we got hex C7. C7 is not going to have anybody, I don't think, either. Nope. Alright, so C7, nothing happened with that. So our attack total is an 18 into this hex. Again, we have a um, you know what? It's a 17. Take it back, because they have a minus one on their firepower going uphill. He has a 7, 8. 
and he draws a seven. He's gonna, we got an event, so he's got a 15, which he's going to be broken after the event. And the event we draw is dust. Place smoke in a random hex. And the random hex is L4. Let's see what happens there. L4. Right there. And we are going to place a smoke marker. These are smoke markers I made and released. Uh, they're on the blog, uh, onceuponagame.com. I'll link to them in the video. Uh, you still, however, draw a uh, smoke value, but it just helps It helps to make it clear that uh, line of sight does not go in or out of that area. So we'll draw a random smoke marker. And we got a, not blaze, we got a, oh, a 10. Wow. It's got a 10 hindrance on it. Okay. So that is that. He failed. He got a 15. So this elite unit has been flipped. He's got a satchel charge or a Panzerfaust, which he cannot use now because he's flipped. And now Sergeant White is going to go. He is an 8. And we're still going against a 17. And an 8 plus an 8 is a 16. So he is broken as well. So that was a mega firepower shot there. Took them both out. So that was their that was their second order. So we reset that. Draw two new guards. Back to me. So I guess we'll try a fire attack. Um, try to keep them at bay here. Um, we won't be shooting through that smoke. But if we shoot from here, they cannot help. Oh, 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 and Sergeant White cannot activate. He could activate uh, this unit in his own hex, but that unit's kind of useless right now. So I would just be activating one. So I guess we'll go ahead and activate up here. And we will activate the... Uh, these two units will attack, uh, obviously separately, because that cannot be part of a fire group. Um, so Bueller will activate both of those uh, uh, ordinances to attack. So. Uh, we will let the 50 cal fire first. He is a 9 plus 2 is an 11. 11 firepower. 11 firepower plus a sniper plus 8 is a 19. Now we have a sniper to deal with. And that's in D4. And D4 is right here. And there's nobody around. All right, so we have a 19 attack total going against eight plus three is an 11. 11 plus two, that's only, the jammed only applies on a fire roll, not on us. So eight plus two, he is broken. So that's good news. All right. And now the howitzer is going to fire at that same hex, and it is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we need a targeting roll of a nine, multiplying these numbers together. And we got a event, four times three is a 12. So the targeting roll did work, but we have to deal with the event. The event is deploy. You may remove an American squad from the map. If you do replace it with two matching teams, I do not wish to do that. All right, so the targeting roll has worked. And now we can hit with a firepower of 10, no bonus. So firepower of 10 goes into that hex. 10 plus 8 is a 18. 
and he now has a 10 plus 3 is a 13 on his morale. 13, yep, 13 plus 11. He clearly survives that one. Okay, and that was my fire order. I need to discard that. I need to make sure you discard always because if I had had a time trigger, I would need to shuffle that one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use one of these route cards on my opponent. Uh, which one do I want to keep, though? Um, I don't think I need the assault fire because I'm not going to be moving too much. So we'll take care of that one in there. And we're gonna do. A, we're gonna try to route him. He is a again ten plus three. Oh, that's kind of a waste. Except it lets me burn the card, so I can try to route him. Oh, but we did get a time trigger, so technically everything freezes until I reset for the next round. Okay, so I've already shuffled my deck. I've advanced the time. I advanced the time marker first. Then I've shuffled my deck. Uh, I'm as the scenario defender. We gained a victory point to 11 at this point now. And now I get to move a smoke marker from the map. So that smoke marker <laughs> that was just there is now gone. So we throw that back in the cup. Put that back on the stack, or not on the stack as the case may be. Uh, and then. If there are one or more units in the space occupied by the time marker, the owner player brings them into play as reinforcement, placing them on any hexes along his friendly board edge. Stacking limits must be observed. Okay, and so I do have a line unit squad that's going to come in. And I get to put them anywhere on my edge here. So I'm pretty in pretty safe company. I guess I'm just going to put him somewhere dead center. Um, yeah, he can get to that squad first, and that squad is not very tactical. But now I may need move orders, so that's good to know. So I'm put him there because he's in pretty. He's pretty safe. He's pretty safe over there. So I'm going to put him there, and he can get up there into the command radius that he needs to. Now, uh, both players may play dig in action. So here's something, I don't have a dig in action. Dig it. However, that is an option here for the AI that when there's a time event, they will determine if they get a dig in. Okay. And they will actually reshuffle their action deck, which we haven't used too much of. But the first thing is we'll draw and check the white die against our number here, which is a three. So we got a three. So he is, um, he does qualify for a dig in event. And then if he gets a five plus. So this just determines which one of these he gets to try for. So the first number here is does he get an action? This number on the black die then determines which one of those actions he gets to take within a list. In this case, there's only one choice. So that said, now he has to draw again and consult the white die as a target versus the target roll. And so if he gets a five or greater, he will play a dig in. So on the white die, he gets a one. So he does not, he does not get a dig in. So he doesn't have to discard a card. Um, the shuffle action deck only happens if he actually plays that. So he's not going to shuffle the action deck and reset that by my interpretation. All right. So that, let's see. Um, I have my turn. That was my second order. Um, my turn is up. All right, so I'm gonna draw two cards to my hand. I got a, another route, and I got a move order, which is good. I'll need that for this guy. So I can start burning move orders, which is helpful, like a moving route. So that is our first round of the game. Um, 
you see a good flow of how this works. I will probably do at least another round. I don't know if everybody wants to see me going back and forth, but you do get a feel for how the AI is working, but I will go ahead and do at least another round. Um, actually, leave, uh, leave your comments uh, in this video. If you've gotten this far, I appreciate it. Um, but do leave your comments. Let me know um, strategy tips, things that I've, I've done that you, you thought maybe were stupid. Uh, it's a good way for me to learn. Um, comments about the AI, uh, that'll be great. And um, uh, if you, if you want to see more, if you want to see this game played out to completion, I'll do it. Um, I'm going to play it to completion anyway. It's more of a question of do you want me to film it. So, um, uh, But we're going to leave it right there. It is the AI's, the AI's turn next. Um, and we are about to go into the second round. We've had one time trigger. And one more is, of course, imminent. So thank you so much for watching this far. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!